congratulations because I know this has been a lot of hard work behind the scenes. Thanks, Brad. It's an exciting day for it to to finally be here, and uh, you know it has been three years of uh, trying to get to this point, and I'm a, a bit player in this compared to what uh, uh, Brian Mueller and Keith Baker and some others have done. You look at your roster today. This is not to take anything away from your kids that you presently have. How competitive at Division One are you? Well, I think it depends what, what we're identifying as Division One. If you're talking about the Pac-12, we're not competitive enough. Okay. Um, I think that we can play with uh, some of the lower D1s, maybe some of the mids, with the guys we currently have. Uh, we definitely have to step up another notch in recruiting. Um, I think on the positive side, I believe that my freshmen and sophomores, uh, the young kids in this program, are as talented as Division I players are. In fact, a lot of them turned down D1 offers to come here. And um, we've got to add to that. I think the big thing we've got to add to is, is just size, maybe a little more athleticism on the wings. Um, I think our skill level is as good as anybody. We can make shots. Uh, we pass the ball well. But, uh, you know, definitely there have been some limitations. Even the kids we've tried to recruit, some of, us, some of them have told us no simply because we're Division Two. So that's a hurdle that got removed today. Because you've played Oregon, you've played UNLV, you've played ASU. Did you play U of A? We played uh, Utah State and Utah. Utah. Okay, so you've played several Division One games. For the most part, you've been in those games yeah. until late. So it's not like you look at your roster and say, boy, i got to throw the whole deck of cards up in the air. You know, Brad, when uh, Brian hired me three years ago, uh, his intent was to go Division One, and I knew that. So with my staff, we sat down and we said, look, we may take even some hits in Division Two. meaning this, your fans may not know at Division Two, there's no age limit. You know, a kid can set out, he can go to school when he's 27 to decide he's going to play. Uh, a lot of D2 programs wait on kids to fail wherever they're at or maybe get in trouble with the law or flunk out of school. And I'm, I'm not trying to be, you know, ugly here, but it, it happens. Oh, and, and Division Two is almost a, a second chance type league. We, dis we determined we were going to go the freshman route. And the reason we wanted to do that was make inroads into the high schools so that when Division One came, we weren't knocking on the door for the first time. And, uh, you know, it's been successful. We went, went to the NCAA tournament. We're currently winning games this year. But I think the big thing is it laid the foundation. So for us today, uh, not a lot has changed from our standpoint, except I do believe we can recruit a little higher caliber athletes simply because we got more to present. Is this Marquette, Xavier, Gonzaga in five years? You know, I don't know if it'll be that quick. I know Brian wouldn't want me saying it, but to be <laughs> honest with you, uh, I mean, those, those teams are good, and, no, and, they, no. and they didn't get good in five years, honestly. Um, I, I think what we have to do is we need to be competitive in this four-year probationary period we go through. We need to be uh, moving in the right direction. You know, one of the things I've watched over time and really paid attention to the last three years are the schools that have made the jump. My alma mater, Central Arkansas, made the jump and hasn't been successful, haven't won double-digit games yet. And, I, I, you know, you look at that and you say, well, what's, what's the difference? Well, I think there's a couple differences. Number one, the commitment here is so much greater than in other areas. Number two, we're in a metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the rural area schools struggle a little bit more. We have built in recruits that I can get in a car tonight, which I will, and go watch somebody play. And so I, I think that those things help us, but uh, the goal is to be at that level at some point, how quickly that comes. You know, a lot of this is on how we recruit. So when you go into the home of a recruit or you go watch tonight, and I'm, I'm, I can't ma name names with you. You and I are both right. hoopaholics. You, of course, being the coach and me just being the broadcaster. But I like to go sit in high school gyms. Are you going to start going to some of these highest of high-end kids within the state that are very well-known and sit down and say, hey, mom and dad or mom or kid, guess what? We're now Division One, and you're going to go after some of the same kids as Sean and Herb now. Absolutely. I don't think that we should back away from that. Now, what's the probability of that? Probably not great, but you never know. The thing I have found, Brad, over time is kids from Phoenix, Arizona love Phoenix, Arizona. They love the weather. They love the, the, the atmosphere they live in. They get used to their environment, and they are not crazy about going away. And, and why would they be? I mean, with the things that, that are afforded them living in the Valley. Heck, when I left U of A, my kids, the number one question is, we are going back to Phoenix, right? Huh. <laughs> they didn't want to go somewhere else. Well, and plus, you have kids that have gone off to other Pac-12 right. schools and have said, you know, sitting here in Pullman's just not all that in a bag of chips. 
or sitting at, at this school where I'm not playing and I'm away from home. So you're probably looking at some of those bounce backs even more so now. Well, I think so. And then what we have to do is try to keep them from leaving in the first place. And I, I believe you start, you know, uh, kids that have been going to the Big Sky, going to the WCC, going to those leagues, the Big West, those, those kids are... I think we can give an alternative to now. You know, not that we're not going to go after the high major guys because we are. We're going to throw our hat in that ring. But I think it's a progression. I think if you can get solid and you're competitive, then you're looking for that guy that comes in and turns your program around. You know, I, I look back at one of my old bosses. Uh, when when Lute Olson hit it big is when Sean Elliott decided to stay at home. Mm-hmm. And at that time, Arizona wasn't very good. They were you know, awful. And people forget that. They were awful. But what yeah. he was was able to do was get Sean Elliott and by the way Steve Kerr was not a highly recruited guy but with playing next to Sean Elliott now all of a sudden you've got these guys and they form a team and that kind of got Luke going and from that point on the rest of its history but I think everyone has that guy that they got to point to we got to find that guy. Russ Pennell's with us uh, the Russ Pennell show every week at 1 30 on Tuesdays here on Extra Sports 910 pros 2 preps.com we're courtside here at Grand Canyon University where today they announced they're going into the Western Athletic Conference GCU is now a division one program in all sports not just basketball in all sports uh, here at GCU scheduling and getting big named schools to come here <laughs> you got an idea <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, the obvious one is you're going to, uh, I guess my question to you is, are you going to go play Kentucky or UConn or Kansas and be a payday where they just beat you into the ground and you go to their gym and take their punishment? Yeah, probably some, probably yeah. some. I, I think that also helps recruiting. Okay. Uh, you know, if I can go into a living room and say, we're going to go play the top, you know, 20 type teams, I, I don't think it'd be smart to try to play 15 of them in a year. No, no, no. But, but I do believe that we need to do that because the more times you're in those environments, the more used, you, uh, used to it you get. I think part of competing at any level, I mean, you, you watch, and when a kid goes from high school to college, he struggles in the first year. Same thing from college to pros. We've all seen the guy that's a can't-miss pro, and it takes him a year or so to figure it out. A lot of that is just being in that environment time and time again. And, and I think there has to be a balance on our part. You don't want to get so beat down that you lose your confidence or you lose your drive. But it, it's going to be a, a, a challenge, especially early on, because right now when we call someone up to play, they're going to say, who are you and what are you doing again? Yeah. And then once you kind of get that across to them, they realize they kind of have the upper hand because uh, you you have to go through this period of getting division one teams and you're you're a little bit at their mercy but i think i'm i'm hoping that a lot of the people that i knew you know i was a division one coach obviously for you know 20 years so uh, hopefully we can uh, reach out to those people and get a nice balance is what i'd like to do so you could go to a duke let's say you go down there and you take your medicine yep. and then you go play appalachian state yep. you go play somebody down in that region I mean, I'm sorry to make it sound like you're going to lose these games here initially, no. but you know what I'm saying. You're, no, absolutely. You want to go find those smaller schools that are close by those big cities, those well, big schools. Well, all people have to do is look at everyone's schedule and see how what your winning percentage is on the road, even good teams. The winning percentage is not great on the road. So when you kind of magnify that, that we probably will have to play a few more road games than usual simply because we're going through this phase, it, it could be rough. It could be rough. And, and I don't mind that. I don't mind that challenge because then that makes us have to raise our game uh, a little bit more. But I do believe we have to find that balance, as you alluded to, where you're playing a, a top-notch team and then maybe someone that's not quite as good that you have a chance of winning the game and then hopefully even those guys might even come back to the arena. Not the, the Dukes of the world aren't coming, but you can get some good uh, c- competition in here and, and hopefully our fans get a chance to see Division One basketball up close. Quickly, i got about a minute here. Mm-hmm. Your schedule coming up this week. and what, what You're playing well. You won again last night. Yeah. What do you have coming up? We have uh, Vanguard, which is an NAI school uh, out of uh, California, and, and they've got a really nice program. Uh, people haven't heard of them, but they're pretty good. Then we start conference next Monday, Hawaii Hilo and Chaminade. Uh, Chaminade beat Texas, as we know, in the Maui. So we've got uh, three home games coming up before finals that are going to be tough. But we've won five in a row, and hopefully uh, we keep this thing rolling. Appreciate you coming by. Thank you. Thank you.